Hey guys, Sullivan Owen here in Philadelphia. Um, today I wanted to talk about the trials and tribulations of growing out bangs, especially when you have bangs and a mask. Um, no, I am talking about bearded iris and I have a giveaway. I have way too many bearded iris, mostly due to the generosity of the different independent growers that I purchased from. So, um, that is good for you guys. You get, I'm giving away 36 iris rhizomes uh, in groups of six, so there will be six winners. First off, let me show you how I'm potting my bearded iris because I am not ready to plant them. Because if you have followed the channel at all, I am still deep, deep in the renovations and constructions of new beds. So I have until the last week of September to get whatever beds I'm going to finished and these guys need to go into the ground. But potting them, as long as you're potting them in a large enough container, I can show you some that have already started to put on roots and new growth that in their pots. So technically they're planted, they're just not planted in the ground yet. I knew when I ordered the bearded iris, which was another pre-rona purchase, um, I, I would not have ordered this many if I had known what was coming. However, the different growers have said that this has been like the most amazing year. Some of them are shutting down early because they've sold out of so much stock and um, which is just really nice to hear. Um, so many industries are being impacted by what's going on. So it's so amazing to hear that these indie growers of all different types of specialties from dahlias to seeds, to iris, to peonies, everybody's just sold out, which is awesome. So let's take a look at what I did outside, how I mix up the potting mix to get the rhizomes planted. I'll show you one of my labels. And um, then we'll talk about some of the different ones I am growing and we'll look at that in spreadsheet form. I know from previous videos, you guys really like to see how I kind of organize and keep keep track of stuff. So I'll show you the garden spreadsheet and then I'll also show you how I am making my game plan for getting all of these planted in the right place at the time of planting. Bearded iris rhizomes or iris rhizomes which ship in July, August into September depending on how warm your zone is. Uh, let's say they show up, <laughs> as they did, while you are still in the middle of constructing their homes, whether that's a dedicated raised bed, which is really common for iris collectors to do a dedicated raised bed or rows for their collection. It's incredibly striking to see just a sea of bearded iris blooms, especially the tall bearded, which is primarily what I bought. Um, but mine are going interplanted into my perennial beds with peonies and roses and those aforementioned missing to be determined shrubs. So I'm not ready to plant them yet because there's still a lot of work to do. Uh, the ones that I potted at the beginning of the month, they, they look great. They're putting on new growth already and developing really healthy root systems inside the pot. So when I go to plant them, I'll be planting them like a container plant rather than a loose iris rhizome. So if you have iris rhizome and you are ready to plant, Yulia at Y Garden just did a great video on dividing iris rhizomes because they do need to be divided every few years, depending on how closely you plant them together and just kind of popping them into the ground. They are super, super straight forward. Uh, there's like zero guessing <laughs> about which way the roots go, which way the rhizome goes. But I'll say the one thing that every single iris vendor, grower, and supplier that I ordered from stresses is that you really do not want to plant them too deep. Uh, because I'm still determining the drainage around the garden, I have a tendency to plant everything high, but you really do not want to bury your iris too deeply. It's the main cause for not getting blooms. Um, and then the deeper they are, the more of a chance of rot, especially if you're in a kind of soggy, wet, humid swamp. It's practically swamp like here right now. Um, so I'm planting high, even in the containers. I've amended the potting mix so that they are kind of 
nestled in without any mix covering the top of the rhizome. Oh sure, no problem. We'll just feather dust in front of the camera. Okay, so what I'm using as my potting blend for the potted iris rhizomes is uh, a good quality potting mix. I'm using one that I got in bulk bags from Fry Brothers, who is the supplier that I got all my compost from for our, our renovations this year. And I am adding in uh, about a half cup to a cup of perlite. So even though the potting mix is pretty, um, it's light and fluffy, it has, uh, most potting mixes tend to focus on moisture retention and we don't really want that for these we don't want to rot the rhizomes so i'm adding in some perlite just additional perlite to help keep it loose and free flowing you don't want to be part of the video do you like bearded iris do you have a favorite And then I am also adding in a half a cup to a cup of biochar, which is a product from a local soil company called Organic Mechanic. Um, the biochar has some just like really good soil nutrients. It's similar to using like firewood ash and, and charcoal and things like that. In the soil, it's a product that's made. It's really dark and rich looking, but it doesn't feel heavy. So I was adding that in because I don't want to feed these rhizomes because they're they really are just putting on their root system before going dormant through the winter so i'm not trying to get them to put on a ton of growth i just want them to stay happy hydrated grow new roots put on a few new uh, leaves as part of the fan and then kind of go to sleep for the winter so i didn't want to like dose them up with any kind of boosting fertilizer you give them fertilizer in the spring as as you do most things when they're waking up so a little bit like um you know a weird alien kind of insect the legs the roots go down the fan goes up the heel go, goes to the back and there you have it and i guess i i should, probably should have said this at the beginning part of the reason i ordered so many is because Bearded iris, specifically the very tall ones, can be incredibly challenging to get as a floral designer. Um, Shriners, who is one of the companies that I ordered from, actually supplies cut iris to several flower markets around the country, but they can be really problematic to ship. They are fragile, um, they're shipped generally really tight, you don't know if they're all gonna open. So it's one of those things like, almost unicorn-esque in terms of like vast availability in the market just because they are heavy it's the other thing it's a 30 inch stalk of blooms and they're thick stems so they're heavy they take up a lot of room in a box they're you know so this is kind of how i add a collection I, I think it's it's what I was kind of doing with the dahlias last year. I just ordered a bunch that are kind of hard to find in the market or problematic like cafe au lait. It's very lovely when you're working and you need a cafe au lait dahlia to throw into a bridal bouquet or something that you're making to just go out back and cut it. So um, that was kind of where some of this came from. I have used some black and brown bearded iris in arrangements over the years, and they were magical to work with in the designs. But like I said, they're hard to find, and they're even harder to find in great shape for using for, you know, a big event job. They would be very hard to do. So fingers crossed I get some like amazing spring jobs going forward where I get to go cut from some of these and they bloom at the same time as peonies. So if you have watched the peony video, I have a pretty amazing collection of peonies. Again, based on ones that I kind of struggle to find as a floral designer. So that's really where a lot of this came from. So you'll see that I favor a few specific color palettes within the iris. I did not buy every single color family that iris come in. 
like I said I think there's millions of them and um, as I was unpacking my first big order and potting them up my husband Tim came home and said I don't like bearded iris and I was just like well for a second I was like oh no and then I was like you know what I dig the holes I decide what goes in them if we jump over to Excel I have the whole list of all of the iris they have the variety name how many are ordered and the photo and if you watch any of my spreadsheet videos before I really recommend if you can just drop a photo into the list. It will make your life much, much easier if you are somebody that prefers to design with color and, um, you know, it just, it's a visual cue. I like that you can shop online for things. I like that um, I'm able to find seeds from big brokers who have, you know, just a, a list. Sorry, it's pouring. Hopefully the sound's okay. Um, but a photo just, you know, you can organize it any way you like. You can add tags for the color families to make sure that you have space for such things. It's just, it's like an awesome feature. So I highly recommend, hopefully you can hear me, jeez. Um, <laughs> my office is our sunroom and it's, there, it's just a flat roof up above me. Uh, I favor smoky pinks and mauves amber brown and purple and plum and berry tones that do not skew to blue and then you'll see i also have a few in here that truly are very blue based and they are so <laughs> pastel and pale that they almost veer into oyster champagne and gray tones which frankly popular in dyed flowers these days but there's very few flowers that actually come truly in these shades so um so you can see in the column column f that i have names these are the hybridizers and uh iris are, are incredibly prolific both from producing iris rhizomes and also for crop creating your own crosses and uh, they're time consuming they take a long time to you you can gather pollen and cross pollinate during the bloom season um, then you can see if you get seeds you'll see a seed pod form if your cross was successful you take those seeds you plant them they overwinter often they don't even sprout the next year so two years you get sprouts hopefully they produce a rhizome and then possibly by the third year, you're getting to actually see the child of your hybridizing project. So it's a pretty long process, but they are so easily cross pollinated. And it's like such, um, there's, there's a few, you'll see these names repeated. Um, Keith Keppel, Barry Blythe, um, Tom Johnson, uh, Paul Black, these, are guys I think most of them are in their <laughs> mid to late 80s now so they've been doing this a long time and they have come up with just some amazing crosses uh, Barry Blythe is now retired he was out uh, he grew iris on a farm in Australia I think the rest of the guys are and Shriners and Mid-America Garden and Keppel and um, Mid-America Garden is Tom Johnson and formerly Paul Black. Um, they're all in Oregon, which is like peak prime iris growing area. They're all kind of in like the Salem, Oregon area. So browns, nothing even veering too far into peach. If you see peach on here. Um, so part of why I'm doing a giveaway is these guys, all of the iris growers iris sisters sutton is another farm i grew i ordered from um and each individual grower hybridizes their own so i i placed generous orders pre-rona and i knew that you got like you know if you order i don't know hundred dollars worth of dahlias you get to pick out a couple a couple of bonus um but the <laughs> iris growers 
are mostly independent and like I said they're very prolific producers so they give you bonus iris some of them you pick yourself and then they just throw in extra so um, my order from the iris sisters farm was was substantial and I guess they were excited because <laughs> they threw in like 22 bonus iris which is how i'm able to give away so many um so uh they added some that i i had missed and was excited to receive and they gave me some extras of some ones that i was really excited about and then many gave me some 2020 introductions which i'm excited to grow and um and just share with you guys so the giveaway iris i did put some like brand spanking new 2020 kind of uh each group is worth around a hundred dollars worth of iris because most of the 2020 introductions range from like 50 to 60 dollars for a single rhizome and so i tried to pull together a good assortment so that you would get something something exciting and each of these uh growers is excited to share their new registrations this year specific colors from each kind of grower's site I found that Mid, Mid America definitely has like the broadest selection um, and they all have kind of exclusives but Iris Sisters has a ton of Blythe and it turns out that I have a major crush on Barry Blythe's Iris um, I also so um, I ordered these in January January <laughs> um, which I did because I um, knew that I wanted to build up a, a collection of them. I, I don't think I knew I would get quite, quite as many as I did. I just kind of went down the rabbit hole and kept kept going. Um, these, these, these are shopping decisions I made before I was aware of uh, what my year was going to look like with coronavirus. I had mentioned that I really do favor these kind of smoke mauve, smoky mauve, smoky lavender, brown, golden yellows and have a fair amount of them here. And um, then within the group, I sort of grouped them together where, um, because most of these I have no more than three of, I wanna think about planting them within the perennial borders and putting them together in these kind of groups also where they play nicely together. So, um, you know, one of the more striking things about walking through an iris garden in peak bloom is seeing you know just the kind of the sea the fans get to be around two two feet tall two and a half feet tall and then you've got these kind of like towering stalks for anywhere from like 29 to 40 inches full of blooms bearded bearded iris flowers are usually um uh tall bearded iris flowers are about six six inches across when they're fully open and they're just you know i think t my husband tim's aversion to them is he feels like they're kind of old-fashioned and i i guess they are um a nostalgic form and the fan and the kind of strappy foliage like day lilies and things like that sort of has like a nostalgic vibe of you know historic gardens actually i was reading the biographies of some of the hybridizers and they all mentioned having iris growing up or having like nostalgic memories about family members growing iris that got them into breeding. But nothing about these feels dated or nostalgic to me. These feel like contemporary colors, especially when you consider pairing them with uh, every, you know, peonies and all the interesting tulips that are coming out and things like spring flowers like fritillaria. So, all of that to me feels contemporary and so that's just kind of what i've been saying to tim is like he may not like the flower but he he likes my taste and i i have pretty good taste when it comes to picking plants and flowers so i was sort of just like well you know trust me i i, I didn't get anything scary looking i i think some of them are really interesting and for such a feminine flower, there's some really masculine combinations. All right, so browns, coffee, uh, smoky plum, mauve. Uh, then we've got truly kind of berry tones uh, with 
I would say some more clear pinks and clear purples in them. Now, Iris, I think, are probably best known for their royal purple, royal blue, blue-based colors. And there are, that's like a whole category of bearded Iris that I actually didn't really dip into because I don't have a lot of plants that complement that for now. And I also had acquired so many that I felt like I just can't add another set of colors to this. So that and like daffodil yellow are two kind of things that I think people, two colors that people associate with iris that, that you'll see missing from, from what I collected. That's not to say I won't find a use for them or I don't dislike those colors. I just, at this point, I'm so aware of the other spring perennials and spring bulbs that I'm planting that uh, they just weren't going to work with, with my targeted color palettes. I have a very kind of pink, purple, lavender garden space with some very saturated colors of both roses and peonies and some dark foliage and some kind of like uh, blue-green foliage that I think a lot of these will end up in. So this I would say, um, this is Black Friday, which is like a truly blue-black iris. That was a bonus. Uh, so I, I didn't intentionally order anything black um, just because I favor so much dark foliage. I didn't want it to get lost. But then when I looked at this in photos, I thought it was really cool. And I thought it, it might actually look great with like light black and white anemones and clear white peonies and, and things like that. So um, but these are the only things that I feel like have a hint of what you would think of as an iris blue. Um, so blue veering into like almost silvery gray. Pastels and unusuals. So, um, I would consider, you know, some of these to have, some of them have like an undertone of like a gray green. Some of them have, um, more peach to lavender. So they're kind of, they work well, but they're more on the pastel, whereas the, um, these, have like a little more saturation. So these are almost the jewel tones versus these are sort of like the soft and saturated. All right, so that's kind of how I sort them out. Uh, this is the planting plan document that I have come up with uh, now that I have sort of uh, my bulb orders for the year are in. Uh, I've made note and started to tag the dahlias that I have loved this year and want to save. And this is going to be the last year that the dahlias are in their own standalone garden. Going forward, they will be popped in as like late summer, fall color into some of the beds. So you'll see that um, fall bloom here is blank. But um, you can see that I have uh, the fall bulbs that go with this color story. So uh, snowdrops, muscari, fritillaria, both fritillaria meleagris and persicaria. Uh, the little guys bloom first, the big guys bloom late. Um, a dark tulip, I don't remember which one that is, it doesn't appear that I um, included it in my list. And then um, a mystery mix of tulips that I got from Eden Brothers last year. I think they got gave it to me as a substitution for something. I actually really liked it, so I'm going to put that in here. Um, they sometimes have some, some warmth to them, but I, I think it's okay. Uh, uh, these are all peonies that I, I have to locate into this bed. Um, the royal wedding poppy this is try number two with them i put some into my containers in the spring they did not enjoy that spot or that container so i ordered some roots for fall planting and we'll be trying those again uh, and then it looks like i've gotten up to <laughs> nine iris into this this color family and i will be looking to add a few more i have about 150 to place so um i haven't counted up every single garden but i, I need to be hitting around 12 <laughs> 12 per color family although um i have a huge 
bed that can take all of those kind of like amber, gold, rust, cream colors. Uh, there, there's a lot of space there. So I don't want to force it too much with this. Here is the sketch. Um, but gestural, this is, this is how I like to draw. Uh, I use a photo of my house and we're at some point planning on finishing all the paint uh, in the, the same dark color as my office. Um, so Ailey drew in peonies, um, roses, I left some space for iris um, and bulbs and things like that. Um, so my plan is to get these things in place. The, the peonies I can be planting until October. I'd like to get the iris in the ground the last week of September. Um, I'd, I don't want to move anything right now. So I, I really have this next like four, six weeks to get the beds in place so that I can start, um, kind of start grouping things, getting everything ready. And then hopefully when it's a little slightly cooler, I can start getting everything planted. But, um, my plan is to really kind of go through methodically and do this for every area. All right, guys. So to enter the Iris Rhizome giveaway, I am giving away six sets of six iris rhizomes to six winners please don't make me say that again uh all you have to do is be subscribed to my channel and since youtube tells me that 75 percent of you are watching my videos but not subscribed it feels like a few of you could hit the subscribe button and then to enter the giveaway be subscribed and leave me a comment down below with something uh that you want a video on with a question you have with um, what you look for in gardening or floral content. There are a lot of great gardening channels and I know that this year has really sparked a lot of interest in gardening. So, you know, my specific skill set in terms of design and floral arranging and things like that, is there anything specific you wanna see? I do have a lot of how-to videos. Uh, but since my floral supply this year is kind of limited to what I can grow myself, I haven't been doing too many how-to videos because flowers are a little harder to come by just everywhere. And um, tell somebody about the channel and help me get to that thousand subscriber mark. It just feels like a milestone I can reach for before my anniversary coming up soon. They say gardening is an exercise in optimism and I certainly could use that as I'm sure lots of people can. And when I look at all those bearded iris, which I'm like, how did I end up with so many? It's because I kept pressing buy in January. Um, I just think about all the flowers I have to look forward to. You know, there's a good possibility that you know, almost all of them will have blooms next year. And that's amazing. Just my day to day is putting, physically putting soil down and making beds and, and adding irrigation and all of that. Like, as I do all of this, I just think about what it could look like in a year, two years. So uh, yeah, it's very exciting. Thank you so much for watching the Iris, Bearded Iris collection video and giveaway. Uh, I will see you guys soon, hopefully with more design plans in the works. Thanks, I'll see you soon. <laughs> Muppet likes when I film at my desk because she gets to make cameos.